Let me start by uh, asking the three founding deans, the new vice presidents, and all my uh, new faculty colleagues to stand and be recognized. It's really special to have you all with us. Thank you. Thank you. Please, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Let me also thank uh, and recognize uh, the, the provost for his uh, efforts to recruit the three founding needs of the search committees and all of you who met with them. Uh, and uh, welcome to, uh, to everybody. Now, let me uh, mention the following. At the beginning of my speech, every year, I have to give you the summary. And the summary can be given in one phrase, and those who want to leave afterwards, please feel free to do it. <laughs> the university is in great shape. And so now what I'm going to do is spend an hour and a half expanding on why <laughs> the university is in such great shape. The, but before doing that, I, everyone on her seat or his seat has something here, excellence by design. Do you have it? Now, what I want you to do, Hamid, is every time you, you know, to keep it with you. And whenever I see you, I want you to really show it to me. And I tell you, what's on page four? So let's start. Why, why is it the case that I'm insisting on that? Because it's bedtime reading. It will not put you to sleep. However, it is already obsolete. And let me give you a sense of where we are. Last year, we received 38,000 applications for 2,800 seats. And if you look at the first chart on page two, open the, your charts. Don't look at me. Open your charts. I'm good looking, but the charts are better looking. <laughs> uh, you will see that four years ago, we are at 12.30. We are, this year, we are at 13.09. It's already obsolete because it's not 1308, it's 1309. <laughs> now what happened? We printed that in August, and in September, it became clear that it's 1309. So that's one mistake. Don't print anything in August. <laughs> the second thing, what is very interesting about the student body is that the students of color are now at an all-time high. We are at 30%. And you see that we are diversifying also in terms of the, uh, out, the international students. Some of them are here today, and I had the opportunity to talk to them, and also outside the Mid-Atlantic region. Now, let me mention very briefly that this is made possible because of the efforts of enrollment, student affairs, but also each one of you. Countless times, families tell me, when I come here, I talk to students, I talk to faculty, I talk to staff. You are our best ambassadors. You are recruiting them. And I want to thank you for this. So from a student perspective, in terms of the incoming students, we are doing extremely well. Now, as I mentioned to you previously, graduation rates are essential for us. I am happy to tell you to report that we are at an all-time high, and for the incoming class, we are tracking 83%. This is absolutely fantastic. We need to keep working on that. We need to reach 85 for uh, the next incoming uh, class, and so on and so forth. But for those of us, like Lou, who have been around for some time, you recall that even four years ago, we were aiming for the 70s, now it's 83%. That's what we're tracking. In terms of faculty, Lou mentioned that we made a decision. And it was a gutsy decision. We said, look, at a time when everybody is retrenching, let's go forward. Let's recruit faculty colleagues. And in the last four years, we have recruited 204 faculty colleagues. That's remarkable. And last year alone, we recruited 40. Now, let me mention something, and it's the honest truth. When the first time I mentioned that we're going to recruit faculty, some of you here today looked at me and, he said, and they said, this guy is looking at the world through rose-colored glasses. 
In fact, it was very risky, but it was manage, a managed risk. Because what we did, we knew that we are a tuition-dependent institution. And as a tuition-dependent institution, first and foremost, what we need to do is keep focusing on our students. And that's exactly what happened. When we, you bring faculty, you're bringing the teachers, scholars, who are going to involve our students not only in the classroom, but in research, in co-op, in community service, in dialogue, et cetera. And that's exactly what our strategy is. And moving forward, it will continue to be the foremost strategy that we are going to focus on. And I'm going to talk about that later on. I want you to look at the results, some of the results in terms of research. And this is maybe page five on, and you have another table here. We almost doubled our research awards. This is tremendous because we have been making bets on emerging opportunities, on emerging fields. We have, you know, from network sciences to nanomedicine, public health. Some of you know more about it than I do because you are making it happen. And from this perspective, the situation is very good. In terms of co-op and experiential education, last year we have made a, an announcement, the Global Scholars Initiative. We wanted to focus on getting our students out of region and let them explore the world. What happened is that this has been extremely well received. And frankly, I'm realizing more and more when I said last year that when we have co-op, Co-op is a very distinctive model of education. It gets our students out of their comfort zone. What I fail to mention is that it gets us out of our, our comfort zone because the students, when they come back, are questioning everything. They hear everything we do, and that's what I love about this model of learning. Let me touch upon our finances and our advancement. You know, we have managed the university in a fiscally responsible way. And at the same time, another situation is happening. Given our successes, our peers are, are seeing a reduction in their advancement results, which is a euphemism for fundraising, by 20 to 30 percent. In fact, we are not seeing any. And we are expanding our activities worldwide with our alumni chapters. So our advancement is doing extremely well and it's helping us. And I'm going to talk today about why, what we can do with the, with the money raised. Now if you ask me, but why is it the case that we have been able to succeed going back to what Lou said, it's an unprecedented rise in higher education. And frankly, I believe that this is due to our mission and our values and also our distinctive model of education. Let me remind you of our uh, mission here. Our mission is, once again, in front of you, states that what we aim to do is educate students for a life of fulfillment and accomplishment and create and translate knowledge to meet global and societal needs. Those are the values that Lou has been talking about. You have worked on this mission. We have adopted that. But also we are fortunate, and frankly, on a personal level, let me tell you, when I started learning about my new institution, this played a very important role before I arrived. And frankly, it played an important role in helping me understand that this is the place that I wanted to join. Higher education is diverse, but not diversified. In the sense that we, when it comes to education, we all look at it in one way. Learning is a classroom situation and sprinkled with some academic tourism, sprinkled with some research opportunities, sprinkled with X, Y, and Z. Whereas here, what I discovered very quickly is a, that the co-op and experiential model, the co-op model is really extremely powerful because it gives us a distinctive approach to education, but it's also transformational. 
what we are saying is in order to learn, we need to integrate study and practice. And integration is key. We're not interested in students going on co-op and taking the classroom uh, and being in a classroom setting, but what we are interested in the students, we are interested in the integration process. And that's where co-op is a relational aspect between the employer of for-profits and not-for-profits, the students, and the faculty. And that's a unique system, and we are the leaders in this system, and we need to keep innovating there. The second aspect is, frankly, I was trained to disdain applied research. I was trained to see that there is a hierarchy between fundamental research and applied research. Theoretical physics, applied physics. Econometrics, applied economics. Co-math, co applied math. Computational biology now, applied biology. What I discovered is that the leadership in this university, the research leadership, is based on the centers that are focusing on use inspired research, that are translational, that are not looking at this dichotomy, at this hierarchy, saying if we look at a problem, let's bring all the expertise to solve these problems. And that's why you know, we have been able to double our research. And frankly, this is why uh, we have been able to make bets on these emerging opportunities, because we are asking the uh, faculty colleagues who are coming here to really be part of something special. And if you ask me in the history of higher education, this is very interesting, because the question is, why is it the case that Northeastern is so distinctive? It, and frankly, I believe that in higher education, the model is the PhD programs. Everything is modeled after the PhD programs. And the graduate education is modeled after PhD education. Here it's a reverse. The co-op forces the university to be engaged. Because it forces the students, the faculty, and the staff to be in tune with the world. And that's why this university is in, engaged locally and nationally and internationally. And that's why the research it's very translational, it's use-inspired, it's focusing on the problems that society is facing. So we have something special. What I did in two minutes is outline our academic plan. But frankly, this academic plan that talks about a university that is engaged with the world is a 20,000-foot plan. It gives us the common vision, the common discourse. What's next? What I would like to do is invite you now to work with us all together, and the us is a collective us, faculty, staff, students, even the, our co-op partners, on a long-range plan. The long-range plan is what we call the strategic plan in action. It's an ambition plan. It has to guide us for the next five years. I can only do the following. I can only tell you that we have to shape it together. But we, what we want to do is very simple. Focus on innovation in terms of the student experience, have more flexible programs, have more opportunities nationally and, and internationally, and the provost is going to talk more about that. When it comes to faculty, the plan should call for an increase, a major increase, in the number of faculty. I hope that in the next five years, we can go, we can recruit up to 300 new faculty. Let me repeat, I hope that we can recruit up to 300 new faculty, 150 to replace existing slots and 150 new slots. Now, if you ask me, but how are we going to do it? We have to roll up our sleeves and start doing it as we speak. It's a great opportunity. And once again, I believe that we have a window of three years before the competition starts getting back in business. Let's capitalize on that. So the provost is going to detail more the features of the plan, but I want to stress one more thing. The plan is an invitation to each one of us 
to roll up his or her sleeves and start working on it. It's a framework. It's not the answer. You have the answers. Last year, I mentioned to you that I announced during this meeting here, this gathering, that we are going to focus on the Global Scholars Initiative in order to get our students to explore the world. Because we are working and competing on a worldwide best level. Our students may end up being in Cape Town, as one of you, one of the students told me she spent her co-op there, or maybe you may end up in Shanghai or wherever you choose. So we need you to be ready and comfortable with this world. This year, what I would like to do is announce an innovation and initiative. What does it mean? Why are we doing it? There is angst in society. We know that there is a recession. We know that the emerging markets are moving up. You know, we, if you go to Asia, if you go to Brazil, you see that the world is moving forward aggressively. I personally believe that this is an invitation, a call to this university that has a tradition of innovation in terms of scholarship, in terms of learning, to be innovative. If we are doing this great research, let's translate it into more companies. If we are leaders in those fields, let's have our students participate more in the benefits that they are getting by not only shaping these fields, by becoming very entrepreneurial. Now, I'm going to keep it at a high level because we are going to come back and I'm going to give you the details about that. However, let me mention one thing, and this is the fruit of fundraising. Last year, as you recall, we received the gift of $5 million from Rich Damore for innovation. That is going to fuel this innovation initiative. In addition, another trustee, Anthony Manganero, has put forth a challenge for the students to, to come back with proposals to change higher education and to perfect our system. Innovation is not only in terms of research, in terms of launching new companies, but innovation is with us on a daily basis. What can we do to think or rethink what we have? There will be a big prize, up to $100,000. I want to compete for this prize, but they told me I can't. So the students stay tuned. It's a nationwide competition that we will foster here, that we will launch here. So let me close with the following. We have accomplished a lot. I am happy, but never satisfied. And this journey is a collective journey. I would like to ask each one of you to join me and make it happen at a higher level. We cannot stop. We cannot congratulate ourselves. We have charted a clear path. And frankly, it is an exciting, innovative, and ambitious path. And it can only succeed if each one of us is going to take risks and make bets. And that's why the Innovation Initiative is meant to foster an ecosystem, a culture of risk-taking and innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you.